What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American, here today to react and learn about things you should never do in Norway. Now, us Americans, we seem to have a bad reputation when it comes to visiting other countries, and probably for good reason, because us Americans, we, we tend to pick a country, we don't learn anything about the culture, and then we just show up and we act like Americans. We act like we're in America, and that can easily make us come across as offensive or rude. If we do something, we might not even realize we're doing it, something that is rude about being in that particular culture, and it's kind of up to us to learn about what those things are, and that's why I am so interested today in learning about these things that you should not do in Norway. So for any Americans visiting Norway, this should be like mandatory viewing or something, and I'm very interested to see what are these things that you should not do in Norway that are maybe quite different than what I'm used to here in America. So let's take a look. Number one. Please stop calling Norway Europe. It's a part of Scandinavia. After living in Wait, what? Is this true? Is this... <laughs> Don't call Norway part of Europe? Number one. Please stop calling Norway Europe. It's a part of Scandinavia. Don't call Norway Europe. Isn't Norway in Europe? Am I... Now I'm questioning... <laughs> I'm questioning everything. Uh, she's saying Norway is part of Scandinavia. Is Nor I thought Norway was technically in Europe. Is that wrong? Or what? what is that part of the world called then? Scandinavia? Is it offensive because Norwegians consider Norway to just be more unique, more, more its own culture, its own geography, and Scandinavia different from Europe? Is that, is that true? I, I have actually never heard that before. After living in Norway, I tend to believe that Norway is a center of the universe and everyone in the world knows who Norwegians are. The truth is, Norway <laughs> is not as large as I want to believe. For those of you who don't know, Scandinavia consists of three countries, Norway, Denmark and Sweden. Right. Yes, geographically we are located in Europe, but still we are in Nordic region, the Viking. Okay, okay, Ooh. okay. So geographically, Norway is in Europe. I thought so. She had me questioning this. Norway is in Europe. But do Norwegians care if they're if Norwegians are referred to as Europeans or would you rather be called Norwegians? Probably you'd rather be called Norwegians. What about Scandinavians? Scandinavians is that better than Europeans? And Norwegians, then Scandinavians, then Europeans, something kind of like that maybe? I don't know. This has me really wondering. Huh. Vikings. I didn't just say it. And it's not even a European Union. Yes, if you didn't know, Norway is not a part of European Union and has right. never been. Let me explain right, you right. why. The Norwegian spent 400 years as a Danish colony and then a century as a union with the Swedish. And now the word union makes them shiver. When the European <laughs> community became the European Union in the early 1990s, the Norwegian Eurosceptic could hardly believe their luck. Their slogan had always been no to the union and suddenly their marketing worked really yeah i mean that is true if norway is not part of the european union that makes it like less a traditional part of europe but still geographically part of europe maybe this is just a preference thing so to just be like polite is it better to refer to that area as scandinavia rather than like northern europe maybe okay i could see that a gift for them. Since the Norwegian rejected twice the European Union membership, but the country still implemented more European Union directives than any huh. other actual European Union member state. This huh. contradictory behavior stems from the fact that Norwegians strongly believe that any other nation is less responsible than themselves. Number two. Mm, and Norwegians just want Norway just wants to be responsible for itself. That's one of the reasons it's not in the European Union. That actually kind of Makes sense. And don't even try to pay with your euros or your dollars here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no. Of course not. But this is a really good one. Don't try to pay with a euro 
or a dollar, a U.S. dollar. This is a great one. Uh, so many Americans would definitely make this mistake. I didn't even know about the Norwegian currency for a long, long time. I did not know about the krone or the kroner, that Norway does have its own currency. Most Americans assume Norway uses the euro, and sadly, there are a lot of Americans who travel around the world and just kind of assume that the world should accept dollars, like like American dollars, like our dollar is just the best thing ever, and, and people should accept it. And all that stuff is not true. There, there's Norwegian currency, it's the kroner, and that is what you should use if you go to Norway, for sure. This is a very good one. Norwegian currency is nok. Norwegian no. kuna. If you're traveling with your euros only, you will not come far. The Norwegian kuna. So the so the euro, the U.S. dollar, I understand, but is the the euro the euro actually is no good in Norway as well. I I wasn't sure exactly about that. So this is helpful to me. Was recently weakened, which means that if you're traveling to Norway in the nearest future, it will be slightly cheaper than it used to be a few years ago. Also, I want to let you know that Norway is using less and less cash. You can mostly right. buy anything here with your card, even taxis, parking and hot dogs. That means it's not That's really cool actually, cuz America is sometimes stuck in the past a bit. Finally, a lot of American stuff is allowing you to scan your card or swipe your card or tap your phone or your card. So Americans are getting more used to this. But a lot of Americans still use physical cash and bills. Uh, whereas in Norway, I, I think Norwegians are a lot more savvy, tech savvy, really. Not a tragedy for you if you forgot to bring cash. Number three, and the most vital for all Norwegian people, never ever sit next to anyone <laughs> on the bus, on the train, or any other public transport. <laughs> this, this is literally, this comes up in almost every other video that I do. This comes up. This, this, I've heard this one so many times. It must be very important. Do not sit next to other people on the bus or the train or other public transport. <laughs> this, this is so funny because this is so, it's the opposite in America. Like, no one cares. There's no respect of personal space or no expectation of personal space or not sitting next to people on public transportation. This is such a Norwegian thing. I like it. I would love it if people like just kind of kept their distance. Like I, I would, I would like it. Should be also mentioned that there are certain rules about sitting on a public transport in Norway. People simply don't sit next to strangers in this country. If you right. see open seats or open benches, you must always take them. Never take just the closest seat, which might already. Right. Don't take the closest seat to the door. I have not had to use American public transportation very much. But any time I do, somebody sits next to me. Some stranger will always sit next to you. It is a fact of life. People just don't care. And uh, <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, this is one I've heard of in Norway. Have someone sitting next to it. This will make Norwegians nervous and they will wonder why you're sitting so close to them. That's because right. Norwegians only get very close to strangers when they're incredibly drunk. Not on the... <laughs> Norwegians only get close to strangers when they are incredibly drunk. Okay, there you go. This is a this is such a good one because a lot of Americans visiting Norway would have no idea. Americans would accidentally do this in Norway and and they would have no idea that they are offending or intruding on your personal space because this is so normal in America to do this. That uh, this is the perfect example of something Americans who don't study Norwegian culture would go to Norway and do this and not realize that it's uh, kind of rude. So this is a good example. Commute home from work at 3.30 p.m. And also never ever talk on public oh. transportation. There's another one. Don't talk on public transportation. Uh, can you talk to your friend? Can you talk on the phone? Because Americans definitely talk on public transportation. 
Americans will talk to strangers, actually, or whatever. So this is another one that's so, it's just so different. It's so funny how different Americans and Norwegians really are socially out in the world. Never ever. You don't take any loud phone calls or <laughs> don't even chat with the friends you're traveling with. You just sit oh. there quietly and look out of the window. Whatever. Wait, what? What? See, that's extreme even to me. Uh, I would not care if anyone took a phone call, if someone was loud on the phone. Sometimes people play their music. That's, that's kind of annoying. But if someone took a loud phone call, I would think it's normal. Um, if, if someone was talking to their friend, if you're on Norwegian public transport and you're just talking with your friend, isn't that okay? Talking with the person next to you? Isn't that, that's not okay? I need, I need more clarification on that. Cause that, that is like a little extreme. That is a bit extreme. Whatever you do, just never ever strike up a conversation with a stranger on a public transport. And, <laughs> and Americans will definitely strike up conversation with strangers. I feel like sometimes Americans are like the opposite of Norwegians. It's kind of funny. Never give them a compliment. No. Number four, <laughs> and don't eat with your hands in Norway. Norwegians rarely eat. Don't eat with your hands? Ever? Aren't there some foods where you can eat with your hands, right? Like pizza and like bread, like a muffin? In Norway, tell me that you can eat a, a muffin with your hands. Americans eat, we eat with our hands quite a bit, actually. Is that, is this true? I have not heard this ever before. If ever, eat with their hands. Food and snacks and even sandwiches are eaten with utensils. With a fork in your... What? Wait, what? No. No way. Norwegians eat sandwiches with the, with forks? With utensils? Is that actually true? I, I've never heard that before. Is that true? Sandwiches? You don't hold a sandwich with your hands in Norway? Wait a minute. With their hands, food and snacks and even sandwiches are eaten with utensils. With a fork in your left hand and a knife in your right hand. Unlike the Americans who are usually putting their knives on the plate after slicing their feet and after they picking up their fork with their right hand. Norwegians hold on to both fork and knife while they're eating. One time... Oh, uh, Norwegians even use the utensils a little differently. In America, sometimes we cut with our right hand and then use our put that down and put our fork in our right hand and that that's true sometimes i don't really ever think about it but it's a little different my friend from norway came to rome to visit me and we were in my auntie's home to enjoy that delicious roman pizza she yeah. made specifically for us pizza. you should have seen my auntie's maria ice as they get really really big when my friend rune and the rest of the group started eating that roman pizza using both fork and knife what? No. I have never heard of this. This is incredibly different. I don't, I still don't believe it. Norwegians, do Norwegians eat pizza with a fork and knife and sandwiches and everything? Is it America? Are we just weird? Are Americans weird? Because we eat, we eat a lot of stuff with our hands, actually. Maybe we're just, maybe we're barbarians or something. I don't know. This is making me question everything. Norwegians are very proper then. Like, that's impressive, but that seems very, like, kind of annoying and, like, having to use utensils all the time. I, I feel like I gotta, <laughs> if this is true, this is absolutely shocking to me, and Americans would never do this. I'd, uh, Americans would definitely eat stuff with their hands in Norway, and I guess we would come across as a little weird and a little, like, disgusting, maybe. Wow. If the proper Norwegian way. Number five, and never be late. Punctuality is the key <laughs> in Norway and the Norwegian. Never be late. Oh my gosh. Americans, uh, this is, uh, really opening my eyes. And it's really showing me that Americans would really struggle in Norway because we do all of these things. <laughs> Americans are very, oh my gosh. Maybe it's just the Americans I know, but 
most people in America, it's not considered rude with your friends to be a little late. Some people are very late and it's just like kind of accepted. If it's a business thing or a work, then you, you do need to be on time. But I think Americans are a bit casual about being on time and it, that can be a bit no annoying, honestly, because I, I do like to be on time. Maybe a little Norwegian in me there. <laughs> Number five, and never be late. Punctuality is the king in Norway, and the Norwegians are very punctual lot. And the idea of I being like fashionably late is looked upon as a bad and really Ah, oh, fashionably late. Yeah, in America, we have that term, fashionably late. Like if there's a party. It, the best example is if you're going to a party in America, most people plan on, be, on being about 10 or 20 minutes late. Uh, and that's just normal. I guess it's kind of like to let the person planning the party have everything ready. You just showing up on time for a party is almost seen as lame. Like, like you're <laughs> like you're too punctual. Like you don't have enough going on that you're just on time. It's very silly when I think about it. Um, <laughs> that is funny. In America, it's almost seen as seen as weird to be exactly on time for parties. <laughs> and in Norway, you just show up on time. I like that. I like that. Weird. Foreign tradition. Sisi, a vero ragazze. Therefore, if you arrange for your birthday party to start at 6 p.m., expect to have a full house by 10 past 6. Wow. Which applied for both the beginning and the end of arrangements. If wow. Norwegians are much better about this. Oh my gosh. Norwegians actually show up to things on time. I like it. I think Norwegians have this correct. I think Americans are, I think we're weird here where you you kind of are expected to be a, a few minutes late to stuff. It, it's weird, yeah, but it's expected. <laughs> if your birthday party is scheduled to end at 11 p.m., your house will be deserted by one minute after 11. Number six. Wow, that's actually really nice. Like, I think it comes from Norwegians just being respectful. Norwegians are more respectful and respectful of time than Americans. I think that's why there's such a big difference here. And I, I kind of like the Norwegian way. I like it. And don't complain about the weather. No <laughs> Is this something you should never do in Norway? Never complain about the weather. Ever? You, you can't complain a little bit? Sometimes complaining makes you feel a little better, right? Americans, we love to complain about the weather, about anything, really. <laughs> no matter how long you are in Norway, even if you're just changing your place in Gardemont Airport in Oslo on your way to somewhere else, 100% is going to be someone to tell you that there is no such thing as bad weather, uh, only bad clothes. It's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. See, in America, we have a different climate. America, luckily, we do get a lot of warm weather during the year. Our winters, our winter is pretty warm, pretty tame. Uh, and so I think Americans, we kind of have it good in terms of weather. So we, we really complain a lot because we have it so good that when it gets a bit cold and yeah, we, we do complain a little. And it's a, I could see where Norwegians could be like, oh... <laughs> judging us a bit for that and yeah we don't we don't have a phrase like this Norwegians have to be really punctual and really good about dressing properly for the cold and for the climate this is just a product of the really different weather between Norway versus America clothes. This phrase is repeated whenever anyone complains that they're too cold or too wet, which happens a lot. From an early age, Norwegians learn how to dress appropriately, grasping right. the concept of layering. And it's the same important as to learn how to count. If no layering, layering, wearing layers of clothing so you can take it off if you're getting too warm or put stuff on if you're getting too cold. This is not something that we think about here in America. So I can see where Americans in would go to Norway and we'd, we'd complain and be like, oh my God, this is colder than anything I've ever experienced in my life. And Norwegians are just like, really? Well, there's a way to prepare for this and it's called layering. 
And yeah, Americans need to know this stuff before traveling to an entirely different country and climate. Norwegians didn't go out when the weather is bad. In some parts of the country, they would never go out at all. Hi, yeah. Bergen, looking at you now. Foreigners are usually drastically unprepared for Norwegian winter. Actually, even more so for the spring or autumn, when you frequently experience all types of weather within yeah. a few hours. So if you're showing up in t-shirt and shorts when minus 20, well, <laughs> you can thank yourself. And Oh my gosh, if you show up to Norway, in like a t-shirt and shorts. That is, that is your fault for sure. <laughs> don't complain. Number seven, and don't complain in general at all. Especially never complain to the Norwegians. You don't complain in general. Okay. So is that just like a Norwegian philosophy in general? Just to, in life, don't complain about stuff. Cause in America, I, I would definitely say you know, we complain about stuff. In America, we almost bond over complaining about different things. It's a way to have fun and kind of let loose and vent about stuff. It's very normal here. Huh. You just met. As Norwegians, don't complain. Trust me, they will tell you they do. But after living in England, and especially in France, I can officially confirm that Norwegians just don't really complain. For example. <laughs> okay. So maybe from her experience living in different countries, Norwegians, Norwegians will complain like any human does, but not as much as other countries. That's interesting. If you tell to any Norwegian that you're not happy with your life, with your job, or just with the hotel room, they will usually give you a very puzzled look, having only one thing in their mind. Why don't you change it? In some cultures... Yeah. Wow. That's actually super... <laughs> That's like good advice. That's very true. In America, a lot of people complain about stuff and we we just like sympathize with each other. We're just like, oh, dang, man, that sucks. Like, maybe you can feel better by doing this or doing that. But in Norway, it's a much different attitude by the sound of it. It's instead of like accepting it as normal, Norwegians are more likely to say, what? Well then, what are you doing? Why don't you change your life? You can, you can change your life, so do it. And I think that's a great attitude. I think that's a really great attitude, actually. I like that, I like that a lot. United complaining brings people together. <laughs> and my mic is absolutely failed on me. All of a sudden it, it got too cold and um, I had this as the result. But in no way complaining would be the main ingredient of how never make any friends with the locals. I decided not to annoy you with such a strange sound, so let's carry on here. Where we were? Ah. <laughs> okay, so her mic actually like broke on her. Wow. Anyway, her point is in Norway it's not as socially acceptable to complain about your circumstances, to complain about your life. Uh, here in America, it is very, very normal to complain about stuff, to complain about your job or your family or, you know, things not going well for you. It's very normal. And uh, I have to say, like, learning about this right now is actually kind of, like, opening my eyes a little bit. We, we probably do have a bad attitude about that here in America. And it would be really good if we had more of a Norwegian attitude. If we were like, okay, we'll do something about it, change it. Don't just like sulk and ask for sympathy, do something. I, I really, really like that attitude. Um, Americans should, could learn something from that. Ah, if in some cultures complaining brings people together, in yeah. Norway it's totally the opposite. In Norway, complaining is the main ingredient to never have friendship with the locals. Never. Number eight. Wow. Complaining does bring people together in America. That's sad now that I think of it this way. And in Norway, Norwegians don't like complaining. Norwegians distance themselves from negativity. That's, that's actually really good. Like, wow. Wow. Uh, I am really enjoying this and it's, it's getting oddly philosophical, actually, this video. I didn't expect it, but we are only halfway done with this video. 
and it is very, very interesting, very fun. So I think I'm gonna stop here for now and complete this video in part two. So if you've enjoyed this video so far, feel free to give this a like or leave a comment, perhaps with what you think are things you should never do in Norway that Americans like myself might not be aware of. And if you're interested in part two of this video, or just more videos like this in general, me reacting to Norway and Norwegian culture, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.